everyone welcome to the show today's guest is a business owner uh, an entrepreneur he's an influencer whatever that means i'm really anxious to find out ladies and gentlemen please meet chris gautier chris welcome hello hi everyone so thank you uh, for having me oh for sure it's my pleasure for sure so tell me what businesses i think you own more than one am i am i right about that uh, no, uh, I own Memento, or I'm the president of Memento Mori Studios, and uh, we have uh, a second location in Chilliwack that opened just about seven weeks ago. So there's a second location, but it's all Memento Mori Studios. In Abbotsford, we offer tattoos, piercing, and fine jewelry, and in Chilliwack, it's piercing and fine jewelry without the tattoo side. Oh, okay. So when did you start that business? Uh, we opened about almost 10 years ago. It was June 2011 we opened, and then about... Uh, six years ago, we, we relocated from a, a 1,200 square foot studio to a 5,500 square foot studio that we've been in since. So do you yourself perform the tattoos or do you hire other people to do that? I myself am more of an entrepreneur, business person, management. Uh, my wife is a tattoo artist. And um, so we have a team of tattoo artists that we've curated over the years. A lot of great, talented uh, professionals. But um, I run the, uh, like, with eight tattooers and, uh, and two piercing departments, I run all the, the back end stuff. And that takes a lot of my time. I see. Okay. Now, uh, I read that you're an uh, influencer. And what does that mean? <laughs> Well, it's just a term that's kind of been tossed around that uh, essentially it can mean a lot of different things, but it's uh, for me, uh, I think that it, it probably uh, is just a way of describing the way that I like to connect uh, people and within the community. Like I'm a big believer in, um, in uh, you know, uh, local organizations and businesses and such working together and, and essentially like cross promoting or, or uh, you know, a business supporting a not for profit. And so I think that um, being in a position to, to, to bring people together, or even if I just, um, you know, help out by making a fun video with the food bank to promote a, a, something that we're doing, you know, just different things like that, that uh, might help influence different things in the community. So. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tell me some of the things other than the food bank, tell me some of the things that you are involved in. Uh, well, my, myself, I'm a director for the Abbotsford Hospice Society. I'm also a director for the Abbotsford Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, those are kind of the two big things that I that I that I'm doing as well as as my businesses. Um, it's felt a little stagnant this last <laughs> the last eight months. So to talk about things I'm involved with is like almost a year ago now. So uh, because of COVID, but um, uh, in normal times we work very closely with the local SPCA branch as well. Like we're big animal lovers, and uh, my wife and I rescue boxer dogs. So we work with uh, rescue a boxer out of Vancouver. Um, and um, so yeah, uh, and then. Uh, other than that, um, there's a lot of different local organizations and stuff that uh, that we work with from time to time. But um, you know, Archway Community Services and the Abbotsford Food Bank have always been uh, been very important, and Abbotsford Arts Council, different things like that. Jam and Jubilee. Okay, but you also come to Chilo Chilliwack and do things here. Am I am I wrong? Uh uh, well, I'll be honest, because we've just opened in Chilliwack six weeks ago during COVID times, I'm not quite as involved as I'd love to be at this point. But um, as soon as things change or we're, we're allowed to, um, aside from just, of course, donating gift cards to, to local organizations, we will get more involved. I'll definitely get involved with like Tourism Chilliwack and um, the Downtown Business Association and uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of in a, in a scary time, right? Um, just opening a business when we get another wave of COVID. So um, are you worried about that at all? Well, I'm, I'm worried, but, um, uh, you know, what I'm worried about basically is the health of my, my family, my staff and my clients. As far as, um, you know, being asked to close by the government, I can, I can worry about it, but there's nothing I can do about it. And so, uh, you know, that's just money. You can always get more, but uh, the people is, is the important part. So um, whatever's best for our community is what we're going to have to do. I mean, I'd love to avoid it. And I think that in a perfect world, maybe if some of the, uh, the casualness of the last few months had have helped it not escalate till this point, we might have been in better shape, but but we're here now, so. Yeah, you got to work with what you have, right? So Exactly. Yeah. But it was very expensive closing, that's for sure. Yeah, I bet. 
Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit. And uh, when did you, get, did you get involved in dog rescuing? Well, the boxers especially. When did that come about? Uh, well, uh, it was um, basically what happened is maybe 14 years ago when my wife and I got our first house, she said, as soon as we get a house, we're getting a dog. And uh, I had not really had dog experiences, but she always grew up with them. And so um, she just had her mindset that she wanted a boxer and I wanted a bulldog, but uh, you know, we got a boxer. <laughs> and so um, not knowing much about, about it, we, we, we bought a, a puppy from a, from a boxer breeder. Um, and um, she was amazing and um, had some few health issues over time. But um, a few years after we had her, we decided that boxers were better in pairs and we thought a brother would be good. Um, and so we, uh, we rescued, um, rescued uh, our first boxer uh, through the organization. Um, and uh, he was an older fella and uh, basically um, he was in a, in a kill shelter in California and basically um, like the day before he was scheduled, the rescue had brought him up and we needed a, we, we had a home. And so he, he worked, he was with us. And um, uh, unfortunately we had him for a fairly short time. I think it was about seven months um, uh, because he was so old and uh, uh, there was something internally that wasn't, wasn't working. And then shortly after we got another, another older male and then um, we got a slightly younger male, uh, the most, recent time and um unfortunately we found out shortly after that he had cancer issues as well and so right now we have a year and a half old puppy and a half a year a six month old puppy so we uh, are taking a break from the rescues because it was a little hard on the heart but um and uh yeah. but that's how we got into boxers and they've all been boxer dogs so right okay it seems like um you and your wife both are, are very passionate about a lot of different things right for sure so do you have any, like, coming up, any new plans coming up? This, by, by the way, just, just you know, this will be airing in January, okay? So yep. I'm not sure the exact date yet, but it'll probably be early January. So do you have anything coming up, do you know, of around that time? Well, um, a big thing for us was getting the Chilliwack location open. And so now that that's up and running, um, and then of course, with the last eight months that we've had and uh, you know the, the potential of being closed again, I'll, I'll be honest, there's, there's nothing that I could 100% say is, is coming up short of um, you know our 10 year anniversary is in June and I'd love to put something, uh, something exceptional together. Every year we try to do, uh, with the exception of this year, every year we try to do something spectacular to thank our staff and clients. So, um, you know, early in the new year, hopefully, depending on how things are going, I could, could make it something, an announcement about a, a June thing. Otherwise, it'll be online. Right. But um, yeah, given the, the current circumstances, uh, other than the recent opening of that studio, there isn't much I can, much I can say. Yeah, yeah. Well, you certainly, Unfortunately. yeah, right. You certainly can get back to me if you have something that you want to share for that June event, you know, so let me know. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate happy. it. Yeah. And I know other, uh, you know, I can connect you with a couple of other people um, that help promote it, you know, like um, uh, Chill TV, it's, uh, you know, Bears Carden, um, Chill TV, who he airs my show. And I'm Perfect. sure he would like that as well, you know. So there's always, there's a few venues that you can go to and take advantage of. Um, and I think it's like um, any of us that were in position where we can share, you know, why not, right? Get the word out for everybody. It's, to me, it's all, all wonderful, right? Awesome. Well, thank you, Nancy. You're, you're an influencer yourself. Oh, thank you. I don't see there myself. There you go. <laughs> I don't see myself that way. Now, I'm just going to go to your background a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Yeah, uh, you, Kathy, uh, who, who, who is the one who connected us together, um, a friend of mine that I know from the 90s, she told me that you're from Montreal. Is that correct? Uh, originally, yeah. We moved here when I was six. So it was a long, long time ago, oh, but my family's from there. Okay. Because she said that she would know that I would know how to pronounce your name because I grew up in Montreal. So, <laughs> uh, you know, that's why I knew how to pronounce Gautier because I know some not people. Com not commonly pronounced correctly out this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay, well, um, I think it's probably just a short video, a short little interview here, unless there's something you want to add, uh, anything you want to promote or push or whatever, go for it right now. You have, the mic is yours. 
<laughs> sure. Well, um, the the most important thing that I would uh, would mention is that if you are in the market for body jewelry or for piercings, that includes earlobe earlobes. Um, doesn't have to, you know. Sometimes people think body piercings, but uh, we carry a quality of jewelry that's not available in the region. And uh, we were the first to bring it to Abbotsford, and now we're bringing it to Chilliwack because we had so many clients making the trip in. And uh, so we carry gold, diamonds. Um, it's a different type of jewelry than what you're getting at the mall. It's it's designed by professional body piercers. And so it's, uh, it's, um, you know, uh, it's, it's really, really good stuff. Everything is uh, hand set by jewelers and, and hand polished and such. So um, if you're in the, uh, you know, check out the District 1881 in the downtown Chilliwack is the, the new project that we're a part of and love the beautiful store. Uh, the, uh, the, the heritage of that area is amazing. And so um, stop by and, and visit. Or if you have any questions, give us a call or check out FraserValleyPiercing.com. Our website has a lot of great info. But um, yeah, just, um, you know, uh, we'd love to, I'd uh, love to say hi to uh, to uh, some new people in Chilliwack that haven't visited before. Okay, you want to repeat your re website again, please, for everybody? Yeah, it's FraserValleyPiercing.com. Okay, so that's how they can get a hold of anybody there that can answer their questions, any questions they have, right? For either. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so, well, thank you so much for doing it. Now, just stay there while I just said, say goodbye to the audience, okay? Perfect, thank you. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed getting to know a little bit about Chris Gauthier and uh, some of the, you know, check out his, his uh, studio, his piercing studio, a tattoo piercing studio, sorry about that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, peace out. <laughs>